So on this week's episode, uh, we are diverted into business and job creation, a post-pandemic factor. Uh, we are still battling with the effect of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic till date. After the first case of um, the first case that occurred in, I think, the 27th of February last year, and um, can you imagine it? It's a year already. Oh gosh! And the business skill, uh, we are still witnessing effects of uh, of all of that, like pay cuts in organization, lack of jobs financial crunch you know and a whole lot you know it's, it's crazy and business are also collapsing you know most a lot of organization as well so the puzzling um uh, side of the issue is that we don't we, we don't know of how long it will continue and hence the need for reinvention recreation and re-strategizing of businesses i must confess to you people that this word was stolen from, uh, I guess, when I went to do a seven, I see you out of you. So I said, Kike, you know, Kike, you are out to be crazy. <laughs> you know, to discuss the business, this business case with me is a skillful trainer, uh, public speaker, and all round communicator. In fact, when she was speaking to me today, I always tell people that the only thing that God did not give me is so hard access to everything. If that will never stop talking. <laughs> She's a satisfied lawyer, coach, emotional intelligence, and of course, behavioral um, therapy for a practitioner and an HR, HR expert as well. She is Stephanie. Can you Steph okay, Stephanie. Okay, Stephanie. Pronounce, you know, I, I always know that people's name. Help me. In fact, in the, in the studio, I think, is it Steph Red? Is yeah, it exactly. Steph? It's not hard. Oh, it's Steph, Steph Red. Red. Is at it? all. Sonia, no, we're arguing inside the studio before we came. Is it that difficult? <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that difficult. Don't mind us. You know. uh, anyway, it's, I'm so happy to it's have a pleasure you. Thank, thank you for creating part of so your much. spending part of your evening with us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, and you look beautiful. You look very beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> I, I, should, I forgot my sunglasses. I should wear it so your your the brightness of your evening light <laughs> yeah, will good. not blind me. You look amazing. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank, thank, thank you. you. So let's just dive into the discussion. You know, I know that you've you know accumulated or should I say assemble quite a number of um, specialties within your career from okay. emotional uh, trainer to being an HR advisor, correct okay, so me, it's, it's and, yeah, and maybe life coach. So for, for me, my que the question is, what was career process and growth for you? Like? Yeah, what's it like? Hmm. Okay, so career for me was actually really planned. So mm -hmm. one of the things that interesting that I was talking to someone, to you, someone about it today mm. that for every time you get your from the very first day you resume any kind of work write your resignation letter mm -hmm. because that will help you guide how you apply yourself in the course of work and the course of your career yeah. so i pretty much had given myself a 20-year plan from when i finished youth service and then in the course of that of course there was time i, I went out after youth service i actually thought no finish with two one just with, and it would take us the hot cake so i studied <laughs> french i actually studied french Ooh, and then i did my master's in french so i just felt that uh, all the embassies in nigeria like this they'll be chasing me right i walked uh, the entire vi i went around with every french every french every french speaking francophone embassy looking for a job so of course that initial time it was hard getting a job nonetheless i still had a vision for what i wanted my career to be like and when i eventually got into human resources started with consulting and then human resources it was pretty much a thing of it was because of the passion for people the passion to talk and influence people and mm -hmm. i thought i could do it through human resources mm -hmm. so i'd pretty much given myself like a 10-year plan of which in the course of the 10 years i was going to expand my hr profession and just give it the best that i could right but then in the course of the hr profession i stumbled on the importance of coaching and I got on coaching because I felt, okay, to be a better HR professional, to be able to manage people, get into the psychological aspect of how you work and how people pretty much function emotionally and all of that. Mm -hmm. I got into emotion. I, so I first had, took the certification course in life coaching. And then, of course, behavioral management. Human uh, beings are balls of emotions. Mm -hmm. 
we actually respond emotionally first for we to respond rationally, males and females. So understanding that emotions drive people and people drive performance in organizations. Yeah. If I can understand how to effectively manage people and get them to manage their emotions, they can manage their relationships better, whether personal relationships or work relationships. So pretty much that was all of it. But the all of that, aside the coaching, was going well up until I was fired at some point of work. So even though I had had a 10-year plan to say by the time, so I had actually said my plan had ended by 40. I said after 40, I didn't want to have paid employment. I wanted to go fully to do what I was really passionate about and just get into it. But then three years before that, I was fired from my job for, I would quote what I was told, that I didn't fit into the organization's way, right? And that particular interruption, that particular disruption took the carpet from underneath my feet, feet underneath my feet. It, it, it totally swept me up my feet and I hit ground zero. And I, hitting rock bottom made me realize that even though I had intentionally crafted a career path for myself in the course of crafting that career path i had defined myself by everything that the career path brought so i had defined myself by the status i had defined myself by the money it was paying me i mean the job i was fired from was a multinational company and i was i was being paid well i was you know when they say money is good mm. i was being paid well right so putting all that together i had defined myself by the uh, by the Ability to, I just go to American American embassy. They can't drive me now. Just tell them I work with blah blah blah, blah. and they just give the, they just give the visa, right? And there's some places you go to because of where you work, doors will open for you. Sure. There are some people you can speak with because of where you work. They would give you attention. So I had pretty much defined myself by everything that the work brought, that the career process brought, such that when I lost my job, I lost my identity. Hmm. I okay. Yeah, you know, I, I enjoy listening to you. Not many people do speak and I just listen. And I couldn't just interrupt you while you're going on and on. I think that we have to hand it to part of a list of our facilitators in my company, ZD, because this one that you're just going on and I say you must come and see, train us as well. well, uh, I'm, I'm well, right. well right. All right, for a lady like you, you know, uh, not necessarily a lady like you, I must say that I'm impressed and um, to many who doubt the possibilities of women so to speak especially when they're doing well so you know stephanie no no i i have no doubts that there would have been challenges and okay. the question is you know you've itemized some of the challenges but what challenges are can you say have been peculiar to you especially as a nigerian lady as a nigerian lady yes okay honestly yeah i wouldn't say any hmm and I say that because I feel that I don't need to prove. I just need to be. And having had, I realized that so personally, of which it may be common, but spending so much time trying to, time trying to prove that you are is evident that there's something lacking. So for me, it's, I, I, I hear a lot of challenges that lady, ladies face. And when it comes my way, I brush it off. And what I simply tell myself is, it's when I, when, of which all of that was pretty much in this course of this journey. And I got to realize that one of the reasons why I probably had some challenges in my, later in hindsight, I was like, oh, was it because I was the leader of the world? I, I, I pretty much brushed it off. Because what I tried to do always was to be, in being was to bring my best to the table. For every time to bring my best to the table and ensure that my best was good enough for what I rated as my best. So bringing it to the table at every time. So if it's not accepted, what I pretty much do is go back and review. Mm. So say, for example, when when this job loss thing came, there were there were different things that there were different things that filled my head that could possibly be it. Was it because I was too outspoken? Was it because the management felt threatened by how I came out strong? Right? Of which I was like, okay, was it because I was aggressive or because I was assertive and they needed a subservient person? Of which I'm pretty much not a subservient person for what I believe is truth and standing for integrity. So looking through all of that, what I tell myself is, what is the, how do I 
always put my best foot forward regardless of what works or what doesn't work? Mm. How do I always show up? Re- and I, I always use the word show up. How do I show up for myself regardless of whether it's a favorable environment or it's an unfavorable environment? So I, I see the challenges, but I disregard them. Because one of the things I tell myself is, I wouldn't let the challenges define me, but I would define myself by an essence that I believe is mine, that I give voice to and, and repeat that voice in my head mm-hmm. up until every other voice is a shadow. All right. You know, oh gosh, we should have brought Stephanie all along. What's going on, Kike? <laughs> You know, many people are relegated <laughs> language uh, pr- pr- proficiency as a waste yeah. of time. A few have started appreciating its value for immigration to countries like you know, Canada. Canada and the likes where French and uh, English are widely used, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. So, for a, for a language trainer like you, and so what advice can you give to uh, people with, will I say, you know, all the benefit of multi-language proficiency. Okay. One of the things I say is, it's just a language of communication. When I studied, when I was studying French, okay, it's not like as though I love the language so much and I studied, it's a lie, I feel jam. So, for, the intention was to study law, but then I was going with French and enter law, but at the end of the day, I fell in love with the French and I thought, okay, I did a master's in it because I wanted to be fully grounded in it. Mm. But then, with the mindset of at first becoming an ambassador, but later when I found out my passion for people and speaking and, and training and coaching and all of that, when I got into human resources, it opened. So the first door that opened for me in when I got into full blown career was because of French. So my the company was looking for a, a bilingual HR professional that they could send to Cameroon to help set up an organization, a, a new branch. And that was where I came. So that was my first door. And even another job, another the other multinational that I got was because there was French there. So French, just like English, just like Yoruba, just like Igbo, is a language of communication. So don't just say, I studied French, and then you sit down. Acquire a skill, because what will happen is, imagine that you're a doctor, and then there is an organization that needs a company doctor in France. And you speak French, and you're a doctor you have higher opportunity than someone that is just a doctor. Mm. You are an engineer who speaks French. An engineering company needs an expert to help their company in Switzerland. Mm. You already have a higher hand over the person that is just an engineer. So a second language is really important. I I, I take online French courses. That's a a side of things I do. A second language is something that is very important. You don't just take us, oh, I speak French. No, do it, do it. So if you are a banker and you speak French, understand the banking terms in French. Mm. Because when a door opens, I mean, it's a global village now. It's just, it's not like before. You can't just cross border, right? (laughs) So it's a global village. So with that understanding, acquire the new language so that you can have a better opportunity to use it. Mm. So with that in mind, let us, so it could be French. I just have a, I just love French because just prejudice is very sweet. Well, I would, I would it's just like very that. sweet, right? <laughs> but it could be any language. It could be German. It could be Italian. It could be Spanish. It could be Mandarin, right? But acquiring a second language opens doors for you. Yeah. A lot of doors for you. All right. Many thanks for that submission. I think it's, Good for us to open our phone lines. Please, you can call us on 0700-923-923-923-923. And of course, you can send us a WhatsApp message on 0817-313-6193. Let's hear your perspective of the topic at hand. For all those running to Canada, for all those who want to go to Canada, if you have questions for our guests, please go ahead. Eat us with your queries and comments. So, you know... Yeah, well, how did you are so the birthing of UR3 actually yeah. came from that job loss? Mm. It actually came from the job loss. And why? You now I was saying something about identity when I said losing the job made me lose my identity because yes. I realized that I had defined my identity by that job. But the entire process, it was it was a hard process. Coming through, coming to the place of self to actually begin to redefine myself by my own terms and not by 
a job, not by a business, not by a marriage, not by anything, which many times because we are trying to be accepted, we define ourselves by the things that make us feel accepted, by the things that give us a status, by the things that give us some kind of position in society, by the thing that fills our bank accounts. So the thing now is when that thing goes, what happens? So having gone through that process and seen how it can be, my desire was now to help people understand how to not just prepare for the day of adversity, but when adversity comes, how mentally resilient are you to I, stand in I, th I think this will lead to my next question because okay. I know life balancing used to be an act, but in this pandemic period, I think it has become an essential need yes. to survive. That's so right. as a person, you know, concerned, progressive, uh, human behavior, be <laughs> a behavioral practitioner or yeah. trainer. How do you help people overcome the overwhelming challenges in these times? The overwhelming challenges in these times. Be grateful for every moment. Be content and be grateful in every moment. Now, these times will make you see the difficulty. But if you can just stop and pause and focus on what you have, what we, it's a time where you begin to see what you don't have, what is not working. But if you just shine the light on what is working, you'll find out that there are many things that are working. Mm. And stop trying to take control of things that are outside your control. Mm. You can't control some things. Work within the confines of what you can control and find contentment and peace in spite of what you can't control. So, I can't change the fact that there's a pandemic. What can I do in spite of the pandemic? How do I find joy, contentment, and peace in spite of a pandemic that I can't control? So we have to now begin to look inwards for the things that we are grateful for. Hmm. Begin to look for the things that we can be content with, regardless of the things that we do not have. Because what happens is we're now focusing on what we've lost, focusing on how sure. else can we apply ourselves. So, I mean, last year, when we had UR3 last year, it was pretty much for how do you survive, manage transitions, re-envision after a loss, build to last and thrive in 2020 and beyond. That was, the, that was pretty much what it was about. It happened in January and March. By March, 2020 began to happen, right? And it happened in such a way there were lots of job losses, not just lives lost, jobs lost, lost lots of jobs lost as well, businesses and all of that. Now, how do you, in spite of the fact that these things are happening, still find a reason to survive, find a reason to, to live and to just be in spite of what you can't control? Mm. So it's now a thing of looking for your strength. What are your strengths? What do you have? Many times we don't realize what we have. So sitting at home, That's you have to ask moment. yourself and looking was and say, okay, what do I have? What do I? So even if the job is gone and something is gone and the business there is always something, the ability to identify that unique thing that you carry that could be a talent which you could turn to a skill and offer for value in exchange for money is something that you now need to look inwards and find. Thank you for that. You know, uh, we have a message from Susan. He said, Hi, Kike. I am Susan from Ikui. Hi, Susan. Please ask your guest if there is any age barrier to learning a new language. Ask her also where and how to get certification for coaching and emotional intelligence courses. Thank you, um, Susan. That's okay. Yeah. There is no age barrier to learn a language. I remember when in my first, when it was my first degree, the oldest man in our class at the time, we used to call him uncle. All of us were 17 and 18 year olds. He was he was 48 or so. And he was very determined to learn the language. There was one other person that was in their 30s. So when you see 79, 18 year olds, and then you see 30 something, because then like 30 something was far. We didn't know we'll reach it one day. And then 40 something <laughs> was far. We're like, is this the age now? We're like, is this the age we're afraid of then? It's, got, it's coming in the front, right? But there's no age barrier to learning a language. What you require is interest, number one determination and commitment to it hmm. interest if you're interested in it determine that you want to learn it commit committed. to the process 
you will learn it. Mm. So I have, so I over, over over the last six going on eight months, there are people that have trained from ground zero, and can presently they can presently watch. I mean, I was just talking to someone before the person you saw me talking to yeah. at the reception. She was yeah. one of my students. Okay. She was actually my classmate in secondary school, mm. and she's learning French. And she told me, she was just telling me that, oh, okay, so we took a break. And she was like, oh, during the break that, oh, she cannot watch French movies. So this is someone that didn't know. Yeah, so, so she says she watches and that she can pick. So the thing now is, what I was encouraging her to do is now move beyond. You need to communicate more because if you don't communicate, the words you use wouldn't come. You would understand it. That's true. Right. You would understand it, but you say, come on, Saba. You say, I am fine, fine, thank you. No, no, you sound fine, thank you, right? Yeah, because it pretty much... Did I try? You tried. Hey! It's definitely just put a stamp on it. (laughs) Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can learn. Yes, you can learn. And and then for the Emotional Intelligence Certification course and Life Coaching course, I can immediately talk about the Life Coaches uh, Olushola Nari Coaching Academy, Mm -hmm. which offers an integrative life coaching certification course and emotion intelligence course as well i can also talk about simon pivot which is pause factory pause factory is focused particularly on emotional intelligence training and then you can google them so you can google pause factory you can google larry olushala larry coaching academy and then yes you can get your certifications all life right. coaching and emotional intelligence. all right susan i hope um, she has given you enough information for you so you know you were talking earlier about the event that you organized last yeah. year and i know that your company is set to host 2021 edition of uh unveil review oh, review, redefine, redefine, and re- launch. And launch, relaunch you know you are three yeah conference this february on the 26th to be precise correct yes, yes. so what is this you are three all about i'm just curious you know when i was reading the bottles that he just come and just grab and finish on that. So, educate curious minds like us. Yeah. What is your house three? So, you, before you answer yes. that question, we have a call on the line. Hello, okay. what's your name and where are you calling from? All right, we lost that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, so you are three was pretty much set up to help in, infuse people with the spirit of resilience hmm. and determination to win. And show up strong in spite of life's most debilitating challenges. Where you are showing up regardless of whether the storm hits or the storm doesn't hit. Mm. And even if the storm hits, it's telling yourself, so it has hit. What next? So I keep saying that failure only becomes final when you quit. So whether you experience failure or you experience a moment of loss, if you do not quit... Now, there is no determination that there's not going to be another storm ahead. But it's now a thing of, you have two choices. Do you want to sink with it or do you want to swim? Of which many times, life just gives you two options. You either sink or swim. Mm-hmm. But how important is your essence, the essence that you carry? How important All right, can you hold that thought? We have a call on the line. Where, uh, hello, what's your name? Where, you, where are you calling from, please? Okay, my name is Ola Lekon. I'm calling from... Can you please speak a little bit louder? My name is Ola Lekon. I'm calling from Export Road. Okay, what's your contribution today? Okay, thank you very much for your guest. You have been a blessing to me. Okay. I just want us to help with uh, where we can learn French online or uh, how we could. That's what I thought about. Thank All right. you very much. All right, many thanks for all that. Okay, so you can. So two things. You can actually go to my website and you see there, which is www at okay. Let me just go to my Instagram handle. It's on my link on my bio. It's yeah. easier to go there. Mm-hmm. So my Instagram handle is at I am Steph Red. So I A M S T E P H R E W D at I am Steph Red. If you click on the link on my bio, so you the first thing you see is U R three, which is a conference coming, and the next thing you see speak French in six months. So click on the link, you see all the details you want there and you can register. The next class starts on the 6th of March. On the 6th of March, the next start class kicks off. So you can actually join that class. There are two classes that are running simultaneously for beginners, total beginners, beginners, and then for intermediates, which is like the B1 for those that have 
reasonable level of proficiency, but they are still trying to communicate and interact more. Yes. So you can register for either of them. So just go to at I am Steph Red at I A M S T E P H R E W D and click on the link in my bio. You see Speak French in six months, and that should help you out. All right. Many thanks for that.